Okay, 17, the final question. So, in this question, is t is 9.81 meters per second squared. So, our accuracy then is 3 sig figs. A bone is protected from the origin. After 2.5 seconds, the bone lands at the point with position vector 40i minus 10j meters. Uh, the unit vectors i and j are horizontal and vertical respectively. Assume that there are no resistant forces acting on the ball, but A wants us to find the speed of the ball when it is 3 meters above its original position. So, this is SUVAT in two dimensions, so with two components, horizontal and vertical. So, it's a good idea to draw a little sketch of what's going on. So if we think of this in terms of X and Y, then our ball is being projected from this point and then it lands at point uh, well, 40i minus 10j. In terms of X and Y, the coordinates would be 40 minus 10. So that's what's going on. Now, we're going to need our SUVAT equations, so I've stolen them from the formula booklet. So, let's first of all list what we are given in the question and see what we can work out. So, we know that the displacement in X is 40. We don't know the initial velocity in X. We don't know the final velocity in X. We do know that there are no resistant forces acting on the ball. So we do know that acceleration along x is zero and we know that time is 2.5 seconds so from that what can we work out we've got s a and t so that actually allows us to work out uh, the initial speed using this guy. So, we know that S uh, S, so 40 is equal to UT so 2.5 U and then the next term has acceleration involved Acceleration here is zero, so that term just disappears. Now this tells us that our initial speed, our initial velocity, horizontally is 40 over 2.5, which gives us 16. So we now know the initial velocity horizontally Okay, let's see what we can do vertically So we know our vertical displacement Now we know that that is minus 10 We don't know the initial speed, so we're going to want to work that out. The final speed, final velocity, 
I guess I've been a bit of a plumber. The bolt lands at 2.5 seconds. So final velocity is going to be zero for both of those. Uh, the acceleration in Y is going to be gravity. So that's pushing us downwards. So that's going to be an acceleration of minus 9.81. And again, that we know the time is 2.5. So again, we can work out the initial speed in the Y direction. So again, we are using this guy. So we know that S is minus 10. Now that is equal to um, UT, so 2.5U minus one half times acceleration times time squared. So, what we can get from that is if we add one half times 9.81 times 2.5 squared We get that that is equal to 2.5 U. So from there we can get that a U is equal to one half uh, times 9.81 times 2.5 squared minus 10 all over 2. Point five. Now we get that to be eight point two six two five meters per second. Cool. So that's now now that filled in. Okay. Okay, now that we know the initial velocities, we can start to work out what we actually want. So we know that we want the vertical displacement to be 3. So, when when uh, our vertical displacement S Y is equal to three. And then what we can do is use uh we can use this guy on the bottom because we know the initial velocity, the acceleration and the displacement. So we know then that v squared so I guess this is our horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical velocity so we're better put it is equal to our initial vertical velocity squared so that was 8.262 5 squared add to a s. So add 2 times minus 9.81 times 3. Now this will give us v squared is equal to 9.41. So if we square root of that, 
our vertical velocity when our displacement is 3 above where we started is going to be 3.068 Okay, so now then we are at a point where we know the horizontal velocity that's 16 so remember that is unchanging because we assumed there's no resistance force so there is no acceleration horizontally so our horizontal velocity is 16 and our vertical velocity is 3.068 now we want the speed of the ball when it is 3 meters above the original position so speed is just the magnitude of the velocity vector so our velocity vector is going 16 to the right and um how should we do it 3.068 up so the magnitude is the hypotenuse so we get that speed is the square root 16 squared add 3.068 squared now to 3 sig figs that gives us 16.3 meters per second job done okay then part b wants us to state the speed of the pool when it is at its maximum height so when it's at the maximum height that point is a stationary point so at that point our vertical velocity is zero now we know that our horizontal velocity is this constant 16 again because there's no resistance forces so our velocity or speed at the maximum height is just the horizontal velocity so just 16 meters per second okay then for part c we want to explain why the answer you found in part b may not be the actual speed of the ball when it is at its maximum height so this comes down to what we have assumed in the question we assumed that there are no resistant forces acting on the ball in real life that is going to be a load of rubbish there is probably going to be air resistance which is going to slow the ball down or if you're outside there might be wind which could if it's blowing the right way speed the ball up so this assumption of a constant horizontal velocity is really a load of rubbish. So we would want to write something along the lines of we have assumed there are no resistant forces which in reality is unlikely to be true uh, so we could have air resistance or wind pushing our ball along. Cool. Okay guys, that's paper 2 done. Hope to see you in paper 3.